Hello, my sewing friends. Let me introduce you to Wow. Wow. I'm Jen and this is my sewing room and I cannot wait to introduce you to this beauty. I actually have two machines sitting here. My uh, Seeger Featherweight and my Faf, my new Faf. And they have something in common. They were both made possible or given to me directly by my in-laws. My husband's mom and dad gifted this featherweight to me about 23 years ago, year, in the year 2000. And they, I don't think, had any idea what this thing is worth. It was made in the 1950s. It is very highly collectible in the sewing community. And I'm very, very fortunate to have one because I doubt that I ever would have had one had I not been given one for Christmas. This thing is wonderful in that it does all the things that a machine needs to do. It goes forward, it goes backward, it uh, has a light, it turns on and you adjust the tension and it does what you tell it to do and you turn it off and you turn it back on again and it does the same thing all over again. I made something on this uh, recently and it was such a pleasure to sit and work with a machine that was so simple, you know? I mean, you pulled the presser foot up, you clipped the threads, you know, you, um, you know, that's about it. And it was just easy. It was like, I didn't have to figure anything out or remember to push a button or anything like that. So that's the beauty of this little machine. And I wanted to tell you about it because it was given to me by my in-laws. But let's move on to the new fancy one. Okay, let's talk about the star of the show, shall we? I want to talk about this. Uh, first of all, let me say that I cannot tell you all the features that it has because I have no idea what they all are. I am going to probably spend the rest of my life learning what those are. But what I want to do is tell you how I got to this machine. And along the way, I want to give you four things to really consider when you think about buying a machine. So first thing, are you at a place where you're ready? This for me was an interesting question because I don't think that it only means uh, my machine needs to be upgraded. I don't think it means just that. It means a lot of things. It means, do I have enough space for a new machine? Am I in a position to spend the money I want to spend on a new machine? Are the things about my machine, are they failing? Are they, I mean, is it the tension's always screwed up or it won't make a buttonhole or it won't zigzag anymore. You know, it constantly needs maintenance or things need to be fixed. Is it costing more to fix it than what it's worth? For me, I uh, was sewing on a FAF 2140. That was released um, short, well, right around 2000. Um, so it was a 20 plus year old machine. It was a computerized machine. It did embroidery, although I never did any embroidery on it. They don't make parts for it anymore. The thread cutter, which I love that feature, it was hit and miss. I mean, most of the time it would cut the thread, but it would always take fiddling with the wheel on the side to get it to, you know, make the needle go up or down to get the thing to cut it didn't want to make a buttonhole anymore correctly. It gave, it gave its best effort, I think, but it would always screw it up. It was always longer on one side or it didn't even do one side, you know, it just didn't work very well. Um, the needle threader, most machines these days do have an, a needle threader. Well, mine ha, had a little trouble lining up. It didn't matter what I did. I was always having to wangle it somehow. So uh, I knew that these were all the quirks of my machine and I could, I could sew just fine on that machine, 
but yeah, then you get to a place where you go, mm, okay, these things are bothering me and it'd be nice to have a new machine, but am I financially ready to be able to buy one? Well, yeah, I finally had to get to that place too. That was one, that was the first thing that I needed to figure out. Am I in a place where I'm ready to buy a new machine? I was. Number two, you need to know what features are most important to you and you need to prioritize them. For me, I knew that I had the features on my machine that I absolutely had to have. I knew it was, I wanted a FAF because they have the integrated walking foot. I knew I wanted a thread cutter, I wanted a needle threader, and I wanted a nice big screen that I could see. Optional, kind of at the bottom of the priority list were a great big throat plate and great lighting. So I walked in knowing those were my have tos and my optionals. One other consideration for me was embroidery. I thought, well, a couple of things uh, made me decide against it. First of all, my friend Christine from Christine Sews A Lot said, you know, Jen, if you want embroidery, probably it would be a great idea to just get a separate embroidery machine. And I think that's a great idea. The other reason was at the, the Charlotte Quilt Studio where I went to buy the machine, they do classes and they had several dress forms lined up in kind of a gallery where they had these stunning pieces of clothing that had been embroidered. They were, I'm not kidding, stunning. There was a jeans jacket there with the back of it and it had this like bird of paradise. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. And then the salesperson took, took uh, us around and we looked at uh, like quilt patches that were completely embroidery, completely. She showed me a little black um, 3D sewing machine. It was like a sculpture, but it was made completely from embroidery. And I picked that up and I thought, this is amazing. This is amazing. It would be amazing to be able to create this. But how much time would it take? And what could I make to wear? <laughs> in the amount of time that it would take me to make this cute thing. I don't really make cute things. You know, it wasn't the kind of sewing that I do. And I stopped and I thought, wait a minute, would I wear any of those things if I had the capability to make them? No. If I walked into a dress shop or into, you know, any kind of department store and I saw this kind of clothing, would I buy it? No, not, I'd probably not. I don't think so. Because I don't. Uh, even when I do buy clothing, I don't buy that kind of clothing. So anyway, I came down to, no, I probably don't need the embroidery machine. So that was really helpful. Um, that when you work through that process, as you think about what you want, um, that's a really good idea. Number three, the budget. Yeah you obviously need to set a budget and know how much you want to spend walking into the dealer because you don't want to get so you know wowed and you know starry-eyed and go gaga over a machine that you obviously cannot afford you don't want to do that you just need to know what the features are you need to know going in i want to spend this much money and this is why you've prioritized your list because you want to know what are the things I have to let go of because I don't want to spend that much? Or it doesn't fit into my budget. Know what the top amount of money that you know you want to spend. Look at that before you walk in. I did that. I did go over that a little bit, but I think, I mean, I talked to my husband about it and I just said, what do you think? Because I was iffy on it and he said, no, no, I, I think that maybe you should go for it. And I had taken my good friend, Michelle, from Michelle Sews again with me to the dealer that day. And, um, you know, she was like, I think you should do it. And so, yeah, I ended up going ahead and going over that budget just a little bit, but not by much. Number four, should you buy it online or through a dealer? Well, now this is a very good question. I had never bought a brand new machine, period. I certainly had never bought a brand new machine from a dealer. And I think 
that there are pros and cons with buying it online or used and then buying it from a dealer. With a dealer, you're gonna pay probably more for it than you would otherwise. You're gonna get closer to like the list price. They might discount it somewhat, but they've gotta make money to stay open. So that's important. So you're gonna pay maybe slightly more. You're also going to get all the benefits that go along with shopping at a dealer. So you get um, the service that you know you can depend on because they sold you the machine. You can get classes to learn how to use the machine and be made aware of all the features and how they work. You can um, maybe get discounts on what's in their store if you need other things like accessories or maybe they sell other stuff like fabric. Um, my quilt shop so, sells fabric, so I'll get a discount on that. You get a warranty. That's really kind of important on um, a machine that you spend a fair amount of money on. These are all the pros of buying it at a dealer. And obviously the pro to not buying it at a dealer is that you save enough money to be able to pay the dealer to do those things. <laughs> um, you may or may not get a warranty. If you buy it from the company directly and they send it to you, it will come with a warranty and some other things. And you can always watch YouTube videos to find out how to use your machine. I mean, I've been down that road, but you have to be willing to do that. And maybe you can get a great deal, but it's not new. And you don't know, maybe, you know, the ad says that it's in excellent shape. It hasn't been used very much. Maybe it is new in the box, but never taken out of the box. Uh, my Juki Serger was like that. So what a deal. Um, but you, you know, you, you take that risk, but you can spend considerably less. So, you know, pros and cons for me this time I went with the dealer. Uh, my 7570 I got on eBay and my 2140 I found on Facebook Marketplace. So there you go. So all of that led me up to this. This is the FAF Performance Icon. It is a model that was released about five years ago. This particular machine is brand new. They had to order it. And they called me when I saw that it was uh, the quilt studio that came up on my phone. I didn't say hello when I answered my phone. I said, oh, it's here, it's here, it's here. Oh my gosh, it's here. When can I pick it up? <laughs> this poor woman. She said, oh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> this thing is fantastic. It does have the huge throat plate and the light and the big screen and it has a thread cutter and it has a needle threader, but this needle threader isn't the kind that I've always had where you, you push the lever down and it rotates in and it has a little hook and it goes through the needle and grabs the thread. Uh -uh. This, you go under a hook and around and then you pull your thread back over the side thread cutter, which most, most machines will have this little blade on the side that you can cut your threads with. And then you push a button and it does it for you. It goes uh -uh. and it threads itself like itself, like I didn't do anything. <laughs> and I know I'm so easily impressed, aren't I? It's got a nice big metal cover for, you know, like the bobbin and right under the needle area that's marked. Like I like for it to be marked. I mean, it's very clear what the um, seam allowances are. It has a front drop-in bobbin, which I haven't owned a faff that's had that yet. Now I do. Um, the bobbins are made to hold more thread so you can sew longer without changing your bobbin. And um, you, when you put the bobbin in, you drop it in and then you thread it through the guides. It's not very much. And then you pull it out, put the cover back on and pull it to the left and it will cut the thread. Well, um, that's it. You don't turn the wheel to bring the bobbin thread up. You don't do that. You just start sewing. It's crazy. It doesn't have a presser foot lever in the back. Like I found myself reaching back behind and I'm thinking, where is that? And there isn't one. You push a button to go up and a button to go down. That was hard for me to get used to and I'm still not used to it yet, but I'm getting there. It has Wi-Fi. Holy cow, it has Wi-Fi. 
I actually bought this during Amazon Prime days. Um, this is an Echo Pop. It's like an Echo Dot, but it's only a half of a circle. I have Alexa, uh, and Alexa turns my sewing room on and off. But I bought the Pop to only work with the machine because I thought that you can tell Alexa to bring up a certain feature on the machine and it'll do it. It's crazy. Uh, it has my name right up there. And it's got the whole manual in the machine. And not only that, it will, it has little animated tutorials where, you know, if you don't know how to thread the machine, then it will tell you, um, here's how you do it. And then it will give you this little animated video of how to do it. And it will go part way and then it'll pause. So you can do the thing that it just showed you to do. And then it continues and you keep going. That's fantastic. Oh my goodness. It has a guide for stabilizers and interfacings. Oh my gosh. It connects to um, a website called My Sew Net, which largely that's for embroidery, but it also has a blog that's part of that website where they have all kinds of projects that you can follow along. I mean, you could you just load them in from the blog and you look at the pictures and it's amazing. It's got like, you can make a kid's apron. So if you wanna do that, it gives you all of the stuff, all of the ways that you, oh my goodness. Um, it's, you can do favorites. It's set up a little bit like a tablet and um, and it will connect and save things with Wi-Fi. Oh my gosh, I just, right there, <laughs> that just blows me away. So I love that I got to get a new fancy machine. I'm glad that I got to a place in my life and that God made the provision for me to have something so nice. I never have had anything this nice and I feel really, really blessed in the truest sense of the word. I'm gonna leave you as always with one of my little prayer cards. This is from Ecclesiastes 3.1 and it's a very well-known scripture. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. I don't know what God has for me in terms of a mission with this machine, but it was time. There is a season for me to have this machine and I just can't quite believe it. <laughs> I walked by this machine at the Sewing Expo a couple of years ago and I went, oh, if only. Oh my goodness. You just never know what God is going to do. It's, he's amazing. That's it for now for me. I will see you next time. And thank you so much for watching.